past few weeks, I've been playing a Pokemon fan game called Emerald Redux. It's like regular Pokemon Emerald, only with a million little changes. Everything from quality of life updates to an increased difficulty, the removal of basically all RNG, all Pokemon up to Generation 8, even completely new areas. But by far the thing that hooked me the most with this game is that every single Pokemon has not one, but four abilities. For the most part, these four abilities are designed to make sense for the Pokemon they're on. But in my playthrough, things are a little different. Because I had the bright idea to randomize everything. Now, every Pokemon gets completely random moves and, more importantly, completely random abilities. And by the way, if you want to watch me play this game live, I stream it for all my patrons twice a month, including a stream this weekend when this video comes out. So if you want to watch all the insanity unfold yourself, there's more information in the description and at the end of the video. This crappy thing, nah, I don't need that. I don't need that, Roxanne. Roxanne, you know how I feel about your Amora? Oh, it's a shiny. Oh, oh, I think it's a little shiny Amora. Oh. Now I'll admit, at first, I thought the random abilities would be just a funny little thing that didn't really matter all that much. But the more I played, the more I realized that when you start combining different abilities together, things can get real broken real fast. Of course, being randomized, there's no way to pick and choose which four abilities you get, but today, I thought I'd have a bit of fun and try theory crafting some absolutely broken four ability combinations. Buckle up, folks, cause I'm about to cook. Richard, hit that intro. Alright, first, let's get the obvious one out of the way. There is a certain combination of abilities that will make any Pokemon literally immortal. I call this one, Can't Touch This. I don't know how the Can't Touch This dance goes. As any savvy Pokemon fan will know, the ability Wonder Guard makes it so that you can only take damage from super effective attacks. Anything that's neutral or resisted will do no damage. So if we simply get this ability onto a Pokemon with no weaknesses, then you basically can't take damage anymore. There are a couple of ways to do this, an electric type with levitate, a watering ground type with sap sipper, but perhaps the easiest and most versatile way to accomplish this is with the ability color change. Now, in most Pokemon games, color change kinda sucks. After a Pokemon hits you with an attack, your type changes to match that attack. This means that your opponent gets to determine what type you are at any given time, and they can easily mess up your stab damage or combo you for super effective damage. All around, it's pretty bad. And so, the creators of this game looked at color change and thought, hey, you know what would be pretty funny? If we made this the most cracked ability known to man. Now, instead of changing your type after being hit by an attack, your type changes before they hit you. And instead of changing to a type that matches the incoming attack, your type changes so that you will resist or be fully immune to the incoming attack. If they use a fire move, well, suddenly you're a water type taking half damage. If they use a normal move, oops, now you're a ghost type and you're fully immune to that. This ability is completely insane on its own because you're immune to every type that one could be immune to and resist everything else. It's pretty much impossible to hit a Pokemon with color change super effectively in this game. So I think you can see where I'm going with this. 
If you manage to get a Pokemon with both Wonder Guard and Color Change, now you can only be hit by super effective attacks. Oh, and also, it's actually impossible to hit you with super effective attacks too. Effectively, you're now completely immune to every damaging attack in the game. You can still take chip damage from status effects like burn and poison though, as well as weather conditions like sand and hail, entry hazards, uh, basically anything that doesn't involve directly hitting you. So let's go ahead and make you immune to all those as well by throwing in Magic Guard, which protects you from all sources of indirect damage. With just three abilities, you're now immune to every source of damage in the game. At this point, the only thing that can hit you is, well, you. If you get confused, you have a 25% chance to hit yourself with direct, typeless damage, meaning that it can bypass all your layers of protection. True, it will take a long time for you to fully die from confusion alone, but let's just throw in the newly added ability Discipline to the mix, which makes you immune to confusion as well. Now, not even you can defeat you. And the great thing about this combo is that it could theoretically apply to any Pokemon in the game. You could sweep through the league with an untouchable Arceus, or you could ruin your opponent's day with an immortal Iggly buff. The choice is yours. While this combo is incredibly powerful, there still are a few loopholes to take it down. If your opponent has an ability like Mold Breaker or Turbo Blaze, they can bypass any ability that would prevent them from dealing damage, so they can still hit you. Aside from that though, the only way to KO this Pokemon is with a move like Destiny Bond or Perish Song. So you can kill this unkillable Pokemon, you need only sacrifice your own life to do it. As you can see, Color Change and Wonder Guard are so insanely powerful, you can put them on basically any Pokemon and make them a million times better. But they're also really boring to talk about. So to ensure this video isn't just 20 minutes of saying, oh uh, yeah, this combo here, uh, you can't take any damage, or if you do this, then you can't take any damage, and uh, oh, this combo is pretty interesting. It uh, well, it means you can't take any damage. I'm gonna go ahead and just ban these two abilities from any combo moving forward. Get out of here! Without those, we can't make a Pokemon that's literally immortal. But we can make one that's pretty immortal. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been playing these games for a long time, and by this point, I got all the type weaknesses down packed. And yet, after nearly 20 years, I still can't remember what types resist what. Alright, so Bug resists Growl got- oh wait, wait, no, was it the other way around? And Psychic, Psychic, is that one of the types that resists itself? Or was that Rock that I'm thinking of? And Fairy's still so new, what the heck does it resist? What do you mean Fairy's been around for 11 years? But fear not, for I'm here to tell you that there is an easier way. What if all those weaknesses that you actually can remember were also resistances? I call this one super effective? <laughs> Hardly. Start off with the ability Filter, which reduces the damage of super effective moves on you by 35%. Now, super effective hits will still deal more damage than a neutral hit, but not that bad. Pair that with Solid Rock, which reduces the damage of super effective hits by another 35%. Then add in Prism Armor to reduce the power of super effective hits by, you guessed it, another 35%. And finish it off with Primal Armor, which reduces the power of super effective hits by 50%. Now, any super effective attack is actually going to deal 27% damage, around the same as a 4 times resisted attack, meaning you no longer have to worry about anything. Admittedly, having these four might be a little overkill, so maybe replace one of the 35% with the new and improved 
anger point, which raises your attack by one stage every single time you're hit. Since it's basically impossible to take you down quickly with super effective attacks, you can safely eat those hits and crank your attack to the max. But speaking of increasing your attack, these last two combos have focused mainly on defense. But you know what they say, the best defense is punching your opponent in the mouth as hard as you can before they can do anything. I feel like these titles might be getting a little too long. This combo was focused on dealing as much damage as humanly possible. The most obvious place to start is with huge power, which doubles your attack stat. Pretty good place to start. And while we're at it, throw in pure power, which does exactly the same thing. Literally, there is no difference between these two besides the name. No idea why they didn't just make it one ability. With these two together, all our physical attacks are dealing four times as much damage. After that, you can throw in Guts, which increases your attack by 50% when you're suffering from a status condition, which you can easily inflict on yourself with a flame orb or something. So effectively, your attack is now six times higher than it normally would be. But we can do even better. For the last ability, grab something like Growing Tooth, which increases your attack stat by one stage every time you use a biting attack, Hardened Sheath, which does the same thing for any horn-based moves, or Moxie, which raises your attack whenever you KO a Pokemon. And when you have stats like these, that's probably gonna happen a lot. That means that you can increase your attack to a maximum of six stages pretty easily, resulting in another four times increase to your attack. Your base attack is now 24 times higher than normal. And what's more, abilities like Huge Power and Pure Power also double the effects of EVs and IVs on your in-game stat, which you can literally manually set in this game. If you want to go absolutely crazy, you could put this on a Mega Mewtwo X and effectively give yourself a base 4,560 attack, or heck, throw it on a Happini and give it the same attack as an Arceus. Alright, so we've got some combos that can hit hard and ones that can get hit hard, but what if you wanted to do both? Well, allow me to introduce our next combo, the Snowball. This combo is simple. No, literally, it's based around the ability Simple, which doubles the effects of all your stat changes. So if you raise your attack by one stage, it's actually raised by two stages. If your accuracy goes down by two, now it's going down by four. A pretty strong ability on its own, but if we pair that with ways to reliably increase our stats, we can get pretty big really fast. If you have speed boost, you can double your speed at the end of every single turn, all but guaranteeing that you'll always go first. Then you can throw in one of the attack raising abilities from before, only this time they're doubling your attack every single time. To round it off, the ability stamina will increase your defense stat every time you're hit. This combo is Perhaps the most risky one so far, because true, it's easier for you to increase your own stats, but it's equally easy for your opponent to lower your stats. To remedy this, you can throw in some stat boosting moves like Amnesia to cover your weak points, and give them a white herb to hold to protect yourself from a big stat drop, or perhaps a focus sash to ensure they don't KO you before you can get the ball rolling. While we're on the subject of risk, though, you know what's always fun? Getting a critical hit. You got a slim chance to deal a boatload of damage. Who doesn't love that? But what if we made that slim chance a little less slim? This combo is my creed. The Assassin's Creed. This combo was all about getting as many critical hits as possible. So naturally, we want to start off with the ability Sniper, which makes all your critical hits deal 1.5 times more damage than they otherwise would have, meaning each crit is dealing 225% damage. 
Basically, if you crit someone, they're dead. So next, let's get a new ability to this game, Ambush, which guarantees that the first attack you make on the first turn of a battle will be a critical hit. For every subsequent round, throw in an ability like Hypercutter or Super Luck, which raises your critical hit chance by one stage. The way critical hit chances work in Generation 3 is a little strange, but you have a base 1 in 16 chance of getting a crit. Every time you increase your crit stage, whether that be through an attack, ability, or item, your crit chance increases based on this table maxing out at four stages where you have a 50% chance to crit on any given attack. If you take both Super Luck and Hyper Cutter, you're at plus two. Throw it on a Surfetched with a Leak and you can reach that plus four. Or perhaps better, you could only take one of these abilities and give your Surfetched attacks that have a high crit chance like Cross Chop to reach that plus four. With that spare ability slot, Heck, throw on huge power to double your attack and deal even more damage. Now you've got an insanely high attack stat. The first time you attack, you're guaranteed to crit, and every attack after that, you have a 50% chance to crit. And each of those crits is going to deal way more damage than usual. We'll make an assassin out of you yet. This next ability is quite simple. We're making the Avatar. Start with the ability Protein, which changes your type to always match the attack you're using. Not only does it make it difficult for your opponent to hit you with super effective damage, since you're always changing up your type, but it also means that you're always benefiting from the same type attack bonus, which increases the power of attacks whose type matches yours by 50%. Unless, of course, you happen to have adaptability as well, which makes all your stab attacks deal 100% more damage instead. Effectively, now every single attack you use hits twice as hard as it otherwise would have. And for your next two abilities, literally take whatever you want. You're already the master of all elements. Wasn't even that hard. Not sure why I took this kid three seasons. Now, I know that I banned color change at the beginning of this video, but I do think that it would fit really well thematically with this build. You're just constantly changing your type to fit whatever scenario you're in. But, alas, rules are rules. So instead, take Prismatic Fur, which is just color change, protein, fur coat, and ice scales all wrapped up into one ability. Seriously, who made this? That's disgusting. And it's a perfect segue into my next combo. Huh, it's almost like I planned these things ahead of time or something. There are a couple of abilities in this game that are just multiple other abilities combined into one. So instead of trying to make the best ability possible, what if we tried to make the most ability possible? As I just mentioned, Prismatic Fur gives you color change, protein, fur coat, and ice scales. Fearmonger gives you Intimidate and the new ability Scare, and it also gives all your contact moves a 10% chance to paralyze. Solar Flare gives you Chloroplast, Immolate, and gives you Stab on all fire type moves. And finally, round it off with Big Leaves, which gives you Chloroplast, Harvest, Leaf Guard, and Solar Power. With this setup, you always change your type to match the move you're using, and again, to resist the move your opponent uses, you take half damage from both physical and special moves, you lower your opponent's attack and special attack whenever you switch in, you have a 10% chance to paralyze on any contact move, all your normal moves become fire and get a 10% boost, and if the sun is up, then your speed is doubled, you're immune to all status conditions, you can recycle any berry you eat, and your special attack gets boosted by 50%. If all that sounds way too confusing to actually be useful, just remember, if you can't keep track of what's going on, then your opponent sure as hell won't be able to either. Also, your special fire moves deal like a bazillion damage with this, so I'd call it a win. And finally, we started this whole thing off with the Immortal Combo. 
so it feels only right to end it with one too. Admittedly, this one's not quite as strong as the first. You can touch this. Eventually. The ability Disguise allows you to tank any one hit without taking any damage. Basically, it's a free hit. It's an insanely strong ability, especially on the right Pokemon. The new ability, Cheating Death, allows you to do the same thing twice. For those keeping track, if you put both of them on the same Pokemon, then that's three free hits that any Pokemon can take without actually taking any damage. Unfortunately, that's as many free hits as we can get, so for the next ability, throw on Marvel Scale, which means that you'll only take half as much damage from any attack when you're at full health. The first three are free, the fourth is half off. Then for the last ability, you got a couple of choices. Self-Sufficient allows you to recover 1 16th of your health at the end of each turn. Basically, like leftovers, but as an ability. If you then give your Pokemon the actual leftovers to hold, plus some health draining move like Giga Drain, then you can pretty easily get yourself back up to full when you eventually do take some damage to get the effects of Marvel Scale again. Or, if you just don't want to think that hard, take Battle Armor, which completely protects you from any critical hit, sorry assassin builds, and also makes it so you take 20% less damage from every attack. This combo isn't as insanely busted as the first one. You can KO this thing. All you need is a lot of patience. Now, admittedly, while these combos are incredibly strong and or funny, they're not exactly practical. With 447 different abilities in the game, the odds of getting the exact four that you're looking for are literally one in 1.6 billion. Still, it's fun to dream. And while I may not have gotten any combos this strong in my own personal playthrough, I've still managed to get some pretty insane stuff. If you want to watch me play this game live, again, you can subscribe to my Patreon at either the $5 or $15 tiers. I stream twice a month, including this weekend, most likely tomorrow when you're watching this. We're getting pretty far around the seventh gym, so you still got time to witness the end game. I know it's gonna be insane. There's also a private Discord server where we can chat about all sorts of stuff, and you can watch the VODs of all the previous streams if you missed any. You can see epic moments such as when I ended Roxanne's professional career, or when I literally murdered my own father. It's pretty great. Again, link is in the description down below. It's a lot of fun, and it goes a long way to making these videos possible. And if you can think of any more insanely broken combos, let me know in the comments down below. I'll let you cook. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go grind a couple billion encounters to find an immortal Iggly buff. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alkazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby. This show would not be possible without your support, so thank you.